Hey, what's up everyone? Gold here, and now we're going to be going over the main slate. So just a short five gamer here in the main. Hopefully be able to uh, get through this quick, but interesting decisions, definitely in the ownership department. Um, on the mound, for sure, we've got ownership spread out between some pitchers, but um, you know some attackable guys here on the mound, most notably uh, Madison Bumgarner. Um, we can go after Jared Schuster a little bit with San Diego, I think. Um, and definitely Coors Field, both Mackenzie Gore and Jose Arania, a little bit attackable. Certainly Arania. Um, maybe some Chris Bassett with the Angels here. Could get off the board in a couple of spots, I think, but definitely going to see some elevated ownership, uh, certainly on the Dodgers, and seeing a little bit on Atlanta here. Um, we'll get into that in a second. Of course, we're seeing it at uh, at Coors Field on both Washington. Washington certainly leading the way in in ownership so far uh, in early runs. Colorado pop, you know, kind of popular too against uh, Mackenzie Gore. So, uh, quick five gamer. Um, let's just get our bearings here real quick. I have uh, Woodruff and Kershaw on the mound at the top here. Uh, Kershaw was fantastic in his first outing. He's looked really good in the spring. He looks healthy again. Uh, so hopefully he can stay healthy. Um, love playing Kershaw, and you know against a pretty weak lineup over here in Arizona. I think the, the price tag is, is okay, and um, I, I think he's a, a pretty decent target. And naturally the field kind of agrees here at uh, you know pulling forty north of forty percent so far. It is just a five gamer, but um, you know big number still. Brandon Woodruff against the Cardinals. Ish. Um, you know, we'll get into the numbers and see if we can really discern whether this is too high. Uh, he, he absolutely has the K stuff. Um, Cardinals with some younger left-handed hitters might strike out a little bit more. So this could be attainable. Uh, here at, at 10,000, though, attacking a, a pretty good lineup on a short slate. I don't know. This, this might be a spot where we could pivot. We'll get into it. Uh, Patty Sandoval gets Toronto. Um, kind of a rough spot for Patty here. Like him a, a good bit coming into the season and expect him to have a pretty good year. Uh, I think it may be an elevated price tag and definitely not a very good spot against Toronto here um, as kind of uh, one of the later games tonight. On the other side, you have Chris Bassett, 8,100 against the Angels. I think this is all right. Uh, he's got some issues, though, to the left side of the plate and really not throwing a by anybody anymore. Service, serviceable starter for sure still, but um, also very attackable. I think uh, Angels might be an off-the-board stack. Um, Jack Flaherty here at 20% ownership against the Brewers. Well, he didn't strike anybody out, and it, this this early number looks a little goofy to me. Um, he should have gotten blown apart in his last outing, and he kind of luck-boxed his way through four or five innings. Um, I like the Brewers here a, a pretty decent bit. We'll, we'll get into that in a minute. Nick Martinez on the mound against Atlanta. I don't like attacking Atlanta in general, but uh, Nick Martinez may at 7,400 be somebody that we could consider not popping into projection metrics so far. So, um, you know, something we can get into as well. Bum, we're, we're never playing against the Dodgers, uh, even though we just saw them. And, um, you know, you sometimes I like – getting to a pitcher when they just saw a team and they got blown apart. It was just for a bounce. But um, not totally crazy about uh, playing bum pretty much ever against the Dodgers. I don't want to play pitchers against the Dodgers no matter what. Uh, he His problems later here in his career, he still just goes right at hitters. And he throws it right over the middle of the plate. And, you know, Arizona doesn't really seem to care that, uh, that he's going to get blasted by righties uh, pretty much all season. Uh, Mackenzie Gore could be an interesting, you know, sort of cheap Coors field play here once again. Got some pretty decent numbers uh, against righties, at least, and Colorado's going to platoon a little bit against him. Of course, they have Ryan McMahon and Charlie Blackman from the left side, um, both of whom, you know, got kind of torn apart by uh, JoJo Gray yesterday. But... Um, Mackenzie Gore, maybe not as attackable as one would think. I think, uh, I think his first outing was against Atlanta, if memory serves, and, and he was okay. Um, I don't want to be making anything up, but, uh, 
Like he's got some whiff stuff here, and we don't want to play him at Coors Field generally. But 6,500 on a very short slate. Once again, as we talked about yesterday, these guys can they can pop for 15 points, and sometimes that's all you need. Uh, Jared Schuster against San Diego. I don't think we can play him uh, this go around. Played him at 5,500, I think, uh, in his last outing. Struggled with control, and that's really going to be the problem with Schuster. Um, has has issues with the, with commanding the fastball and throwing strikes. So if he's going to walk the whole country, that's going to get him into a lot of trouble against San Diego. You can stack the Padres here for sure. Uh, Jose Arrania, we're we're just not touching. Um, Washington's going to be a little sticky. They're at Coors Field, and Jose Arrania doesn't strike anybody out. So uh, this is one guy, however, I, I think is probably almost certainly off the board. For me, um, very occasionally he will pop, and we might be able to get to him like a night game at some point in the middle of you know July or something. It was 62 degrees in Seattle or you know whatever. Um, but I mean, outside of that, it is very rare that we're going to be considering Jose Arrania. He just doesn't throw throw it by anybody. So let's get into the games here. We'll try and keep this short and sweet as well. Oh. Uh, wrong sheet. Uh, there's a sneak peek behind the um, hitter ownership paywall. Uh, okay, San Diego and Atlanta. Um, first game on the docket here. Martinez on the mound at 7,400. I think this is interesting. In aggregate, doesn't really have uh, an impressive strikeout rate. You know, a couple ticks below league average, but he, he throws strike one. His problem is really throwing strikes two and three. Uh, he's throwing a lot of stuff here. So a full five-pitch mix for the pitch is actually pretty damn good. Unfortunately, it's the four-seamer where you really want to establish uh, that's not very good. He's throwing the four-seamer right over the middle of the plate, keeping it on the barrel. It's not a terribly alarming rate at 8%, but... Um, I mean, you certainly don't like an 8% barrel rate. Uh, with some hard contact, that that gets to be a little bit worrisome. Good for him, though. Um, he doesn't really give up a whole lot of hard contact. Certainly to righties, inducing a, 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 you know north of 20% soft contact is a fantastic number over here against righties. So we don't really want to target uh, a lot of the righty power necessarily from Atlanta and that is Acuna. That's Austin Riley. Uh, who else do they have from the right side? No, oh, we're still in the early slate here. Um, they have Marcelo Zuna, who stinks, but, um, you know, so these couple of guys, Darno is out of good starts of the season. Uh, Sean Murphy as well, finally you know, had an extra base hit. Uh, it was about time um, last night. So a couple of these guys, it may make it a little bit difficult to stack some of the some of the Braves here and in early runs we're actually seeing um, you know 12 to 15 percent ownership on some of the Braves one of the more popular stacks against Nick Martinez and I'm not sure it's totally warranted now we can definitely get to him with lefties now 184 ISO allowed not so much in the way of batting average but uh, a little bit because a little bit in the Woba category that is because he he does walk some lefties, so and that's what's elevating the the walk rate up here. It's throwing the secondary pitches here, the changeup and a curveball for a strike later in the count. Um, trying to rely a little bit too much on the four seamer here as a pretty bad pitch. Uh, extreme negative value here for him. Um, so that's really the issue. You don't want to be piping a, uh, a 94 mile an hour fastball to the Braves over here, uh, and even though the the power suppression numbers here are pretty good to the right side i mean acuna and, and austin riley they hit righties just fine you know what i mean so um that's really how we want to attack mostly with uh with the braves here it's going to be the lefties and if you want to mix in a full stack i mean go ahead i think the ownership as of right now in early runs is probably a little elevated for full stacks but uh, what we can do is get to some of the lefties. That's Matt Olson territory for sure. Uh, definitely, you could you could play him uh, 5,200. He's going to be a, a relatively decent pivot off of like a Freddie Freeman down here or something like that. Um, in in the first base category, you'll probably not going to have much ownership coming to these guys over here, but you'll definitely have some coming to Joey Manessis at 4,500, some to Dom as well at 32, and probably a good bit on, on C.J. Crone. 
maybe some on Vladdy. Uh, Otani is always owned. You know, their first baseman is always very deep, and that Matt Olson you may see a little bit of reduced number on um, in that regard. He may just kind of fall through the cracks with Vladdy here at 55 in a plus matchup, Manessis at 45 in a plus matchup, um, Olson here at 52. So attainable for sure, and. Really, I think w the only thing we got, we're going to have to worry about here is, is maybe some weather. Uh, it's early in the day still, so keep an eye out for this. Um, but Matt Olson and Michael Harris at 41. I think Michael Harris may have tweaked something last night. I, I could be making this up. Uh, I, I had the game on mute, but um, we have to keep an eye on him. See if he's in the list today. You can get to Ozzy Albies for sure. At 4,600, I like this a lot at uh, at this price tag. He's buried down here in the six hole, um, just because they've got some, you know, pretty work. They they may sneak him up here today because, uh, as we mentioned, uh, a righty righty matchup for both of the catchers, Darno, even though he's been seeing the baseball, and um, Sean Murphy, not a plus spot for them. So may see Ozzy Alby sneak up here to uh, maybe maybe the four hole um, or maybe even the five hole. So we'll see what they want to do with the list. If Michael Harris is out, you'd almost definitely see Ozzy in the five. Um, and you could play a cheap Eddie Rosario if you if you get down there to it. Now, he, in the latter years of his career, he took about a year off or something um, or had to because he had, uh, he had eye surgery to fix his vision. And really, unfortunately has not seen the resurgence in terms of power numbers that we saw before that um, when he was playing in Minnesota. So he's really just a filler piece. Orlando Arcia has been hitting the baseball pretty well, but he's going to strike out a lot, and he's a righty. We don't want him against Nick Martinez. So uh, mostly just the lefties here for the Braves, and at, for full stacks, I think it's probably, at least in initial runs, the ownership may be a little bit high. On the other side, for Schuster, 62, as I mentioned, you can't really play him. I don't want to... Uh, be dealing with him. We've just the, these are just the the short sample numbers that we've got uh, from his first start. But he like he couldn't throw strikes, and he had like four or five walks or something. Uh, so it was pretty worrisome there, and that's going to be an issue with Schuster. That's really the scouting report on him that he, he's going to have trouble with command. So um, I don't want to be playing that game against Padres and at even 12% ownership now. Once again, like he's a cheap pitcher that that does have some stuff, right? He's 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 got three pitches, and the scouting report on him is that they're solid pitches. It's really just the command that's going to get him, uh, but he's not throwing very hard. Okay, the velocity you can't fake this at 91, 91 velocity with subpar command uh, against. A lineup over here like Padres, uh, I think this is a pretty reasonable stack target uh, to get to San Diego as kind of an off-the-board um, sort of play. So I don't really want to play Schuster today. Um, you know, 6,200 is more expensive certainly than 5,500, and and this is a pretty bad matchup in general. They're not going to strike out over here, and the Padres look to be heating up. Uh, at the plate a little bit. So um, I like San Diego here and a little bit of some, some shorter Brave stacks, but you're getting San Diego at markedly lower ownership than the Braves. Uh, I think that's probably a better play. And I think you could consider some 7,400 Nick Martinez uh, on the mound. Um, you know, the strikeout stuff against the right side is going to leave a little bit to be desired. The power suppression numbers are, are pretty good. He does have an elevated K rate to the lefties. That's because of the good changeup, uh, but still giving up some power there as well. So not super crazy about playing Martinez. Uh, field, not really all that crazy about it either. Just, you know, 8 to 10% ownership uh, in early runs as of right now. The average projection on a median projection on him hovering at about 10 points. I think it's probably fine. Maybe a tick low. I think there's some upside to outperform that number in aggregate, but uh, overall not super excited about uh, attacking the Braves with guys that don't have plus-plus velocity and plus-plus swinging strike stuff. And 12% swinging strikes for Nick Martinez is good, but uh, a bad four-seamer at a full 25% of the arsenal uh, is very worrisome. So uh, you can stack the Braves. You can always stack the Braves. Um, but 
you know, not my favorite playing, playing full stacks just due to some ownership concerns here. Let's move on to St. Louis and the Brewers. Uh, first series for these guys uh, in the uh, NL Central. Jack Flaherty on the mound for the Cardinals. Uh, I'm not going near this. I do not trust this guy. He should have gotten absolutely torched in his last outing. He walked the bases loaded, somehow got out of the inning, and then somehow luck boxed his way through five innings. Um, if I sound salty, it's because I, you know, I, I stacked against him. It, in any case, um, I'm probably going to do it again. I like the Brewers, and I like I like targeting or playing the Brewers uh, against guys that don't strike anybody out. And and Jack Flaherty, of course, just a you know sub 20% strikeout rate has uh, has had a lot of trouble here. And we're talking you know a full 41 inning sample now, only throwing strike one at 56% or so with a 15% walk rate. I mean, it's getting a little worrisome now. Um, you know, if he's going to put people on base against the Brewers, Brewers going to hit it over the wall. And all of a sudden, you could be looking at a real crooked number. Uh, we've seen they weren't on a main slate, but uh, the Brewers put up a 10 spot the other day. They hit f- three dingers against Scherzer. Um, you know, they can they can really bang it, and really not a lot has changed this season to last season uh, in in that regard. 185 aggregate ISO for the Brewers against lefties excuse me, against righties last season, created at a, a positive clip, 108 WRC+, plus, 325 Woba, high walk rate, right? 9.5%, that's one of the higher numbers in the league for a full team aggregate. So, um, you know, just north of a of a, a 1-0 ground ball to fly ball for the Brewers. So these guys are going to get the baseball in the air against Flaherty and with a, against lefties, a, a 1.4 ground ball to fly ball that actually plays into the hands of the Brewers fly ball hitters pretty significantly. He's also getting it in the air and yielding a 1-0 ground ball to fly ball to the right side. So um, the power suppression numbers here a bit noisy for Flaherty because he's putting way too many people on base. He's staying off of the barrel and getting some ground balls uh, with a good slider. Still, he's always had the good slider. So the that has come back after his injuries. Um, so the breaking stuff so far looks fine, but the four-seamer is bad, and he cannot spot it at 93 miles an hour. If you're not throwing strikes, uh, Milwaukee can make you pay, and I don't think we're seeing near high enough ownership on the Brewers here. Uh, I, did, I like I like the Brewers here quite a bit. Uh, I think they could put up a crooked number against Flaherty. I'm not touching him at 7,500, and a full 20% ownership. That's it. seems totally ridiculous to me now they will strike out but he doesn't have any any whiff stuff so no thank you brandon woodruff on the other side um ten thousand for woodruff i yeah uh, i think it's fine i don't generally like targeting the cardinals here now the cardinals will have some of their younger hitters in the list um like nolan gorman in particular tyler o'neill strikes out uh, definitely arenado and goldschmidt don't strike out against righties wilson Contreras, eh, a little bit um but some of their younger hitters, Jordan Walker, he's going to K if he's in the list today against Woodruff. So there's some upside for him. Um, and Alec Burleson, he's, he'll strike out a little bit. Good prices here for some of the Cardinals. If you want to take a, a super off-the-board contrarian stack um, and try and go after Woodruff, I think Woodruff is markedly better than Corbin Burns, to be quite honest. Uh, Corbin Burns has not been good for the last, his probably last eight starts going back to last season. Woodruff, on the other hand, much much better um so i i would certainly side with woodruff uh over burns in in this particular matchup against the cardinals but even still i don't want to target them they're very hard to get through in the middle of the lineup here with goldschmidt arenado and wilson Contreras now um and with some platoon guys that they're throwing up at the top of the lineup with pop and sort of uh, bookending the guys in the middle that don't strike out with another guy, Nolan Gorman, certainly Tyler O'Neill with pop. It makes them very hard to navigate uh, in general. So not my favorite attacking the the Cardinals, to be honest. And, I mean, that doesn't mean you can't play Woodruff. 10,000, I mean, it's fine. There's going to be plenty of value today that you can that you can eat uh, to get to a Woodruff if, if necessary. Uh, the problem is his ownership is... 60 percent and that's fine but 
once again, if you're going to want to get to some some chalkier stacks, like uh, Washington and Coors, for example, you're not going to be able to eat this unless you're playing a couple of pretty off the board plays. So, got something you got to keep in mind, and something we'll have to maneuver here on a, uh, a short five gamer. So uh, the numbers are fine, though. He's not overly attackable, more so with the right side a little bit, to be honest. And that's in Goldschmidt and Contreras and Arenado territory. So um, lefties on the plus side of their split, like they're going to strike out a lot. So with a 31% aggregate K rate, you can still play him. I'm not not suggesting that you, you fade Woodruff here necessarily. But um, overall, it it's going to be a little bit more difficult than than perhaps the early ownership projection numbers and the raw K rate would suggest. So um, I don't think it's bad if you want to fade Woodruff in tournaments. You know, 10,000 is 10,000, and uh, that's a stiff price tag to pay uh, against a good baseball team over here in the Cardinals. So overall, um, I, I do side with the Brewers. You want to run correlation stacks um, with, with Woodruff, you can eat the – 60% on him and just play the Brewers too and nobody's going to play them so um, I think that's fine if you want to do that and, and drop your ownership figure uh, relative to the rest of the field on, on Woodruff that's that's fine uh, differentiate there a little bit uh, but I'm not going near Jack Flaherty uh, he's got to show me that he can throw strikes first before I start uh, considering him okay um, course Field again and this was a frustrating game last night man uh it was a really good spot for both offenses against guys that don't throw it by anybody, and those guys, well, they threw it by everybody. Um, went deep into the game, did Kyle Freeland at least, and JoJo Gray, he spun it pretty good. He was spotting the fastball, and the Rockies are undisciplined and very frustrating. When they get cold, they're going to be very cold, and the entire lineup was you know, pretty, uh, I mean, lukewarm to Put it politely, I suppose. Um, Jerry Profar here at 3,700. He's always going to garner ownership now. Uh, we're seeing about, you know, aggregate 15%, give or take, on all of the uh, Rockies right now. This is their lineup from yesterday, of course. We don't have anything yet. But um, this is going to be pretty similar to their lineup uh, most often. Um, everybody, they're just going to run with their guys. And, and Charlie Blackman, they can't afford to – to sit Ryan McMahon or anything, even though he's, even though he's not very good against lefties, um, they they just need somebody to play second base for him. So uh, really, not much they're going to be able to to maneuver in terms of uh, lineup construction and platooning or anything. So it's mostly going to be this same type of list. Jury Profar does give them some flexibility at the top of the lineup. Blackman hits lefties fine, um, and and Max got plenty of power, but like I said, they need him in their healthy playing defense. He could win a gold, gold glove this year. He could really pick it over here. Um, so this is going to be their lineup, uh, mostly against Mackenzie Gore. But Mackenzie Gore, another guy that's got some whiff stuff in him. Just a 10.5% swing strike rate. Called strikes leaving a little bit on the table as well. But uh, he can throw by some guys. He's got some gas at 95, and he's kind of a... Um, I mean, he's got bad secondary stuff, but he's got a, a workable four-seamer here. And with bad secondary stuff, it's generally going to make it very difficult at Coors Field. Uh, so that's why we're seeing some elevated ownership uh, on the Rockies. I mean, it's Coors Field. You just play the Rockies at, at Coors Field pretty much all the time. Uh, they're going to get ownership, but... Um, it's going to elevate their ownership a little bit because he doesn't have a slider or a curveball that he doesn't have an out pitch, right? Well, throwing the change up here uh, against righties at just 5% of the time, I mean, it's going to be difficult to navigate the Rockies lineup down here uh, a little bit with bad secondary stuff that, you know, if it's bad at sea level, uh, it's going to be much, much worse at, um, at elevation here in Colorado. So, uh, I think we can play some Colorado stacks again. You can go right back to him, uh, even though Mackenzie Gore also at 6,500, you could you could very well consider playing him. He's got a strikeout rate to the right side of the plate on the negative side of the split for him at 24%. This is a pretty good number. Suppression numbers, you know, in 58 and a third against righties, buck 30 ISO, 260 average, 328 Woba, it's fine. 
it's fine considering he's got you know bad secondary stuff. So 35% hard contact rate is worrisome against the right side. Just 1.1 homers per nine so far to the righties. On the barrel at a north of 9% clip, so a little bit worrisome. And this hard stat cast hard hit percentage, uh, a little concerning as well at 44%. Um, it is, that suggests that you know while the pitch info hard contact rate is a little bit lower at 33%, that suggests just some pretty significant medium plus type contact and it is coming mostly against the right side, as we would expect. Um, against lefties, he's, he's elite, so I wouldn't go near Ryan McMahon today. Uh, good thing, because he put up like a three ball or, or something yesterday. Um, Charlie Blackman, probably avoid him as well, even though the prices are still attainable on those guys at 42 and 4,400 respectively. Um, you can play some you can play some Chris Bryant for sure, and of course you can play Jerry Profar at 3,700. And C.J. Crone, 58. That's probably a bit stiff here today uh, at, at a full 15% ownership. But plenty of pop, and uh, he's playing at Coors Field. So uh, six-game slate, you can, or five-game slate even, you can you can play the Rockies. And really, to be quite honest, 15% ownership in aggregate on the Rockies on a five-game slate at home, I mean, in a vacuum, it seems like a pretty damn good number to me. Uh, on the other side, Jose Arania, you're not, I'm not touching him. Um, I'm not going near him. He, he can't throw strike one. He walks people, which means he can't throw strikes two and three. Doesn't have any swinging strikes in him. Has a 14% aggregate strikeout rate, and that's it's really the exact same number to both sides of the plate here. Um, doesn't give up a lot of power because he does keep the ball on the ground for the most part because he throws a hard sinker at, uh, at about 96. So he's got plus velocity still. Is he's not throwing it by anybody. Decent slider, so if he has, if he's burying the sinker, it's a it's a neutral value pitch for him for the most part. If he's burying the sinker and is really getting the slider to bite. Jose Arena, as I mentioned in the opening, will pop on occasion. Uh, if if he just kind of runs into you know a couple standard deviations of outsized performance, he may strike out five in six innings or something. He may go seven. Um, you know, and and kind of surprise everybody, really frustrate everybody. Today, do I think that's it? That's necessarily going to be the case. Probably not. Last year against righties, these numbers are a little bit noisy for the Nationals, of course. But um, at 20, 21 percent, give or take, a little sticky. Did create you know below average, just a 92 WRC plus, 130 ISO, no power to speak of. These numbers noisy because they made significant changes to their lineup. Uh, after the break last year. So this incorporates everything, but uh, nevertheless, they're still going to be a little frustrating to play pitchers against because some of the guys at the top of the lineup, the Alex Calls, the, uh, who else do we have? Um, Joey Manessis, Jamer, really didn't strike out a whole lot against uh, lefties. He will against righties, but once again, Arania's not going to throw it past him. Uh, Dom Smith, hoping he can have kind of a, a resurgence from his Mets days. Uh, Kavir Ruiz uh, hits from both sides of the plate, also didn't strike out literally at all. Um, Lane Thomas, pretty good against lefties, a little worse against righties. But, you know, so a sticky list here nonetheless, and they're going to lead off a Luis Garcia probably um, against righties, who is very cheap and... Certainly, we can attack uh, Jose Urania, as I said, with both sides of the plate here. So uh, you're going to see a lot of ownership on the Nats. Um, don't have them in the sheet, but they're 20% at least uh, on a five-game slate, as you would kind of expect. So, um, you know, but don't be surprised if Jose Urania, like he was bad in his first start, of course, as he normally is. Um, but they're going to they're going to let him throw, and he may only throw, you know four innings or, or, you know, four and two thirds or something, but he's still going to throw 9,500 pitches. And at 61, if you can get that out of a starting pitcher with slight upside to not get totally blown apart with the sinker slider combo, um, it is reasonable. And how, however here, you know, we do have to keep in mind that he does throw a, a change at a full 16% of the time, just a five mile an hour velo delta on the change up to his sinker. And that's not great. You want that you know, pushing 10. Um, so that will make him more susceptible to left-handed power. 
and you know they've got some lefties up here for the Nats that they can um, they can platoon against him. So I uh, do like the Nationals, of course. It's just a, an ownership thing that you're going to have to balance. Um, at 6,100 in deep tournament stuff, yeah, on a five-game slate, if you want to take shots, you might – like he has upside for 13 points. Uh, definitely. Uh, it's not going to come in the way of strikeouts necessarily, but it's so it's mostly in the suppression, and you just got to kind of hope that uh, Washington's going to be bad again. Um, they're going to be bad pretty often, so you know, it, it's not totally out of the realm of possibility, but for the most part, uh, Arania expects to get kind of blown up here. Uh, okay, moving on, Toronto and the Angels. Chris Bassett. On the mound, he got beat up pretty good in his first start as well. Overall, the uh, suppression metrics pretty you know, they're fine for a middle of the rotation type of starter. Unfortunately, he's anchoring this rotation up here uh, along with Alec Manoa. So, um, 380 ERA for a number two starter is like, eh, I don't know. Uh, buck 20 whip because he's got good control. He doesn't walk people. Uh, but just a 22% strikeout rate anymore for Chris Bassett, and he's throwing a full six pitches. Uh, at a pretty respectable clip, four-seamer bad, change bad, slider bad, but um, just still workable with a good sinker, good cutter, and a good curveball. So wish he'd really just kind of um, get rid of the bad changeup and the bad four-seamer and focus more so on a three-pitch mix, uh, or even four, leave the slider in if you want. It's a legit slider to the curveball, so um, just doesn't have the the downward horizontal bite. Um that you really want from a good slider, he might be even mixing in this new sweeper pitch that uh, you're seeing a lot of guys um, kind of move to if they've got a subpar slider. So um, in any case, throwing the kitchen sink here, and it's really not translating to a whole lot of swing and miss, unfortunately. Um, but he's got good control. He doesn't put people on base for free, and and he stays off the barrel at 7%. So um, these are fine numbers, but we want to get to him with lefties generally. That's you know obviously Shohei Otani territory. Um, they've got a couple other lefties over here that they can throw in the lineup. Uh, Luis Renjifo, Jake Lamb will hit from the left side. Um, Renjifo, they're unfortunately burying down here at the bottom of the lineup. It's because they've got power guys like a Renfro Drury, uh, etc. They need to put Jake Lamb down here in the eight. He's just terrible. Uh, and Renjifo, he actually had a really good season last year. So still pretty right-handed heavy are the Angels, um, but that's Trout. That's uh, Taylor Ward territory. We don't really want to get in with, into that. Brandon Drury had a fantastic year last year. 3900 is a playable price tag for him. He hits right. He's just fine. Um, still with the Hunter Renfro at 48000 it's egregious. Uh, I, I think this is a terrible price tag but you can play at i mean 52 for taylor ward it's kind of aggressive as well so hard to stack the angels um but naturally we're going to see Shohei otani at 6100 he's going to get a lot of ownership tonight seeing him in early runs uh, north of 20 percent which is, i guess is pretty respectable on a five game slate in general in a plus matchup but um elevated nevertheless so that's how we want to attack uh 197 iso do the lefties have against uh, Chris Bassett with a full 1.7 homers per nine. Angels ballpark does play, Angels Stadium, I suppose, um, does play up left-handed power anymore. They uh, they brought the fences in, and it it really works to Shohei Otani's benefit. So um, you can play play some Otani for sure, and you want to play a Renjifo, make it a little bit cheaper, sure, a little two-man, think that's fine. Um not anything in the in the way of elevated ownership coming to the Angels in early runs so far. So you could you can get to him, and you you can always play Trout. Um, he's struggling a little bit at the beginning of the season here, striking out a good bit more. But um, you know he's still a, a low ball hitter, and good thing for him. Chris Bassett's going to stay two righties down in the strike zone a little bit, uh, and Trout hits righties perfectly fine, of course, with a sinker cutter combo. And the curveball, he's going to stay down in the strike zone, and he's really not going to be elevating uh, against Trout, and that's really his main weakness is getting the ball up in the strike zone and attacking him in on the hands. Uh, so against righties with a buck seventy ground ball to fly ball, it's an okay spot for Trout as well if you want to get off the board with a very expensive Angel stack. Patty Sandoval on the other side, uh, 8,500 for him. I like playing Patty. Uh, I think he's going to have a really good year, as I mentioned. Um, 
but still a little bit of concern throwing strike one here, and that didn't really change a whole hell of a lot um, in his in his first outing. I think there's going to be uh, some attackable spots for Patty this season. Uh, tonight, probably not. Uh, he's on the negative side of the split here. He's got good numbers and good suppression numbers against righties for sure. Uh, so at 8,500 and reduced ownership, just 13% against Toronto, don't be surprised if he pops a little bit and outperforms to the tune of a 17, 18% out or 18 point outing uh, or something like that. But uh, slightly elevated walk rate, 9.5%. And that is to the right side. So we want to be careful with that because these guys, Bo Bichette, will strike out. Uh, and, and he does have some strikeout stuff against right. He's about 23, 24% to both sides of the plate, really. But Vladdy won't strike out. Uh, Matt Chapman will, but uh, has also seen the baseball a little bit. And, and Witt still at a, a cheap price uh, down here at 2900 You can play Danny Jansen, good fly ball hitter, makes a good bit of contact. Uh, looks like he may be supplanting some Allie Kirk as the number one backstop over here. Allie did DH a, a good bit last year, so they may be um, going a bit of a different way in in that category. Uh, but he'll probably be in the lineup since he got the day off. Um, other righties, uh, like Kiermaier's definitely just going to be in the list down here at the 9. He's in here for defense, um, not necessarily his offense. Kevin Biggio, probably not. They might do something crazy with a uh, a Sani Espinal or something like that. Um, in, in projected lineups against lefties, it's almost always going to be Kirk. He may even be behind the plate tonight, uh, and they may DH Danny Jansen or something like that. Uh, they do some goofy stuff with those guys. Um, but Springer, Bichette, Vladdy, Varsho, Chapman, these guys are pretty well solidified. Witt will almost definitely be playing again as well. So, um, you know, some susceptibility here and some elevated run totals right now uh, for – both of these teams, Toronto and the Angels, 65 in, in L.A. And like I said, Angel Stadium will play up some, some offense a little bit. And really, as of right now, these are the initial ownership numbers on Toronto. Um, of course, you're going to see 12 15% on the top couple of guys pretty much always. But uh, everybody else not really going to be played. So you can get off the board a little bit with Toronto if you want to go attack Patty Sandoval. I don't really because he's got pretty damn good numbers. Uh, certainly against lefties, I'm not I'm not going to play Dalton Varsho or anything. Uh, he's elite against lefties. Uh, but against the righties, it's it, he's got average to slightly above average strikeout stuff um, against that side of the plate and really doesn't give up all that much in the way of power, just a 108 aggregate ISO. They'll hit for a little bit of average, 267, but you know, nothing terrible here. So not my favorite stack here with the Blue Jays, um, but if you want to get off the board, once again, on a five-game slate, I mean, be my guess. 85 for Patty. Uh, I probably won't be playing him. Um, I think it might be a little bit elevated for this particular matchup because, once again, Toronto's just not going to strike out. 20% aggregate K rate against lefties in a 115 WRC plus last year with some power at a buck 64 ISO um, last season. So not my favorite to attack with Patty tonight, but um, as an off-the-board pitcher play, like you could play everybody on, on a five-gamer. Okay, last game here, uh, Dodgers and the uh, Diamondbacks, sort of a rematch here. Not sure why this is not, oh, I haven't changed. Um, I got to change a, an abbreviation here. This is Bumgarner. We know his major problems are to the right side, of course. Um, I just have a lookup error here in the, in the sheet. So uh, we'll get to that in a second. But uh, Kershaw on the mound for the Dodgers, 97 for Kirsch at 43% ownership. I think it's fine. 17-point um, average proje or aggregate projection here in the media. I think it's also fine. It's throwing strike one still, not walking people still, uh, and striking people out still. So uh, everything looks fantastic for Kirsch. And just a, a minimal sample because everybody tries to stack against Kershaw because he will give up a little bit of a little bit of power to the right side, but I mean, in aggregate, still just a 200 average, buck 21 ISO, and an 090 homers per nine uh, to righties. So it, I mean, it's not like it's a terribly attackable spot in the last season plus for Kershaw here. 
mostly relying now on the four-seamer slider and has kind of relegated to really good curveball that he that he showed early in his career um, in favor of the slider. So uh, that doesn't matter. Both of these pitches are plus-plus and fantastic. Velo a little bit down still, but uh, that's one of the first things to go as guys age. But um, everything about Kershaw still looks impeccable, and if he's healthy, he's still a, a top-10 starter in baseball. So um, I like getting to Kershaw again, and at 40% ownership, he's one of the better arms here. I, if you have to choose between him and Woodruff, I'd probably side uh, with Kersh here, just because the, the Diamondbacks are, are markedly worse. Uh, Bum on the other side, as I mentioned, his problem is is righties. He gives up a boatload of power uh, to righties. Maybe we'll give um, give you guys a sneak peek at uh, a little bit of split numbers here um, against righties. Here is Bum, and let's uh, let's line things up here a little bit. Uh, here's Bum. Right and a 368 ISO, excuse me, WOBA with a 229 ISO and a f nearly 40% pitch info hard contact rate, buck 64 homers per nine to the right side. Uh, to lefties, however, you know low strikeout rate still, but just a 129 ISO, 330 WOBA, hard contact still definitely as well, but um, not something we really want to shy away from necessarily with the Dodgers. So you could play all of the Dodgers. They are expensive again. Also, Mookie, 5,900. Freddie, 56. This is a fine price. JD at 47. Uh, also elevated. Trace Thompson, he'll be in the list. He can make it cheaper. He had two bombs against Bum uh, in his last outing. And Miguel Vargas also has pop, 2,400 with Chris Taylor at 35. So they make it workable. Miggy Rojas, if he's in the list tonight, uh, he doesn't strike out, and you could play him as well as kind of an off-the-board shortstop play. If you want to pivot off of some of the Chris Taylor ownership, he's going to be north of 20% or pushing 20% tonight. So um, Austin Barnes, he stinks behind the plate in general, but he's got a little bit of pop, and he'll he'll run into a baseball every once in a while, and it could very well be, a bit, be against Bum, who's not going to throw it by him. And he's just going to challenge every single one of these hitters here. Uh, Max Muncy has actually gotten bum in in the past as well. So uh, the lefties are fine. You can you can stack the Dodgers definitely. They are going to trail uh, probably just Washington in terms of raw ownership. And that's kind of how it's going to flesh out. It's going to be Washington, the Dodgers. Uh, Colorado and Atlanta coming in uh, at relatively similar ownerships at the moment. And then you're going to throw in all these other guys. So uh, with San Diego, Cardinals, Brewers, um, probably see a little bit more on Toronto than those guys. But uh, that's kind of how they're fleshing out in, in terms of raw ownership so far. Um, for me, I like San Diego here. I want kind of want to attack Jared Schuster and the lack of command early here in his career. Um We'd hope that that is a little bit better compared to his first outing uh, here in his second, but uh, still, I'm I'm not going to go after him um, or or go after San Diego uh, with a a lefty that's really only got 91 mile an hour miles an hour in the tank. No, thank you. Uh, St. Louis and Milwaukee don't really want to play St. Louis here tonight. I don't like attacking Brandon Woodruff, but it's five-game slate. You can play whoever you want. Uh, give me the Brewers though against Jack Flaherty. I'm I'm fading this. In, until proven otherwise, um, or told otherwise. Uh, Washington, Colorado, it's just an ownership game you're going to have to balance here. Uh, if you want to throw Mackenzie Gore and some deep tournament stuff, go ahead. Uh, Jose Arrania, I mean, probably not. Uh, you just can't throw it by anybody, and the, the ballpark is huge, of course. So you could see some uh, a good bit of offense here today uh, in, in Colorado. Toronto and the Angels. Uh, I like the Angels a little bit here. Not so much on Toronto, but, um, you know, they're not going to strike out. And Patty's, you know, uh, I don't know. He has some vulnerability in throwing strike one and putting some people on base. And if he doesn't have the command and the swing and miss stuff that you can't really get around with – um I mean, without that kind of stuff, you can't really get around Toronto, so it's a little difficult. Uh, so not my favorite getting to Patty or Toronto necessarily, but uh, you can play both sides. Um, you know, if you want to play some off-the-board pitcher stuff, no thanks on Chris Bassett. But, uh, yeah, you can play, play a little bit of Patty if you want to get really 
contrarian with it. Not not great though. Um, and give me give me Kirsch and the Dodgers for sure against Arizona once again. Um, you know, Bum's just his problems against righties as we uh, as we just went over are too worrisome. So that's where we are for the main slate breakdown. Um, keep an eye out for projections on both the early slate and the main slates today. We'll have those pushed to the site. They should be pushing to Saberson, but uh, if you are having any issues, uh, let us know, and um, we'll we'll try and jump on it and get everything fixed. But uh, that's it for today, guys. Uh, good luck.